When will the universe end? It's a question you've probably asked yourself at some point in your life. Maybe it's popped up once or twice, only to be shrugged off. Or maybe it's kept you up at night, casting never-ending existential dread. For some, there's no point to an answerless question. For others, it's an obsession not even the smartest people in the world can begin to process. Like most things in life, death is an inherent and inevitable experience both we and the world around us will end up with. The same rings true for the expanse of space that sits beyond Earth and into billions upon trillions of light years into the stars. The universe too will one day come to an end. To best grapple with the question of when, we must first take a moment to break down the how. How will the universe end? Using predictive models based on quantum physics, theoretical physics and astronomy, we can at least build the basis for the four most likely options that lead to the end of humanity, planet Earth and the cosmos. It is generally agreed upon by major leaders in the astronomical community that the universe is slowly and exponentially expanding. For roughly every megaparsec, which is measured at 3.26 million light years, the universe expands at 67.36 kilometers per second. While it may seem slow to some, it's actually a much faster rate than originally anticipated. For the big chill scenario, the expansion must continue asymptomatically whereas the universe ultimately reaches the temperature of absolute zero. When the universe reaches absolute zero, it means the enthalpy and entropy of all theoretical gases reach their minimum value of zero Kelvin. In other words, the universe reaches an equilibrium at the lowest amount of energy possible, called thermodynamic equilibrium. The Big Chill scenario is one of the more widely accepted theories by astronomers, due to its potential, regardless if the universe is an infinite flat shape or a defined closed shape. The caveat to the latter condition is if the universe is closed, dark energy must remain a cosmological constant. Dark energy is still just a theory and has no observational evidence to support its role in the universe. However, due to the acceleration of the universe's growth, it's not agreed to be a constant, even if it does exist. In simpler terms, the Big Chill results in the slow decaying of star formation. Since the Big Bang, or creation of the universe in general, stars are thought to form normally between 1 to 100 trillion years. Eventually, the amount of gas that stars need to be born and thrive with will be depleted. This means that while the stars already shining across the cosmos die off, no new stars will emerge. Without stars to burn fuel, the universe will slowly grow darker, and with growing darkness comes lessening heat. Due to the proliferation of dying stars, black holes will become much more frequent and will eventually outnumber living stars. With black holes come the death of other galaxies and celestial objects, along with an increase in radiation. This type of radiation, called Hawking radiation, would also lead to the death of black holes themselves as they very slowly disintegrate and cease to be. These disappearances, combined with the loss of spontaneous entropy, or more colloquially known as the state of disorder, lead to the Poincaré Reoccurrence Theorem. The Poincaré Reoccurrence Theorem states that all dynamic systems will one day return to the state they were in originally, meaning the universe will one day expand and become what it was before the Big Bang. As popular as the Big Chill scenario has become in astronomical doomsday circles, it's highly unlikely to occur in our lifetime, or in the lifetime of our solar system in general. The observable universe is estimated to be just under 14 billion years old, which means that under the current calculations of star formation, there could be another 985 billion years before our gas supply runs out. That doesn't even take into consideration the near-infinite time it would take for the remaining black holes to vanish, meaning the Big Chill, while potentially inevitable, is so far off from happening, it's not worth trying to comprehend.
Similar to the Big Chill scenario, the Big Rip is one of the most commonly discussed end-of-universe theories in the scientific community. The Big Rip also heavily relies on the expansion of our universe and the potential entropy side effects caused by a rapid acceleration of said growth. The difference lies within the rate of acceleration when comparing the two scenarios. With the Big Rip, astronomers focus on the Hubble constant. The Hubble constant, also referred to as Hubble's law, is a rate defined by the observation of galaxies moving further from Earth, recorded at speeds proportional to their distance from our home planet. For example, a planet located in a galaxy 100 light years from Earth will move away twice as fast than a planet located in a galaxy 75 light years from Earth is moving from a planet located in a galaxy 50 light years from Earth. Using the Hubble constant, astronomers have determined its current acceleration will not actually destroy massive bodies throughout the cosmos, such as galaxies and solar systems, due to their collective gravities. However, the Hubble constant isn't fixed for eternity. There is a belief that the Hubble constant will continue to accelerate at faster rates. As the rate reaches infinity, the acceleration would be fast enough to destroy all bodies and structures across the universe. The Big Rip gets its name for what this destruction would look like. Every single fragment or object across space would disintegrate, all the way down to the smallest of molecular bodies, including entire galaxies. These disintegrations would leave every single object of any mass lingering about as unbound elementary particles, also known as subatomic particles, smaller than even protons, neutrons, and the quarks within them. Along with the subatomic particles, the universe would be filled with excess radiation. However, everything would be measured as one singularity due to the scale factor, expansion rate, and density of the universe reaching infinity. While the Big Rip scenario involves the Hubble constant increasing towards infinity, which would happen billions upon billions of years into the future, when the Milky Way would no longer exist, there's a chance it could happen even sooner amidst even more chaos than originally thought. The Big Rip timing question arises with the introduction of phantom dark energy, a theoretical energy that withholds negative kinetic properties, much like dark energy itself. Phantom dark energy would influence the Hubble constant at a much, much faster rate of acceleration, and the instant disintegration of our universe could happen even sooner with a much more destructive initiation. A less accepted scenario regarding the fate of our universe comes in the form of the Big Crunch, a symmetric theory connected to the birth of our universe, unlike either the Big Chill or the Big Rip. To explain the Big Crunch, one must first understand the Big Bang. The most widely accepted theory of how we and our current observable universe came to be is that, when the universe was once a dimensionless singularity, its state of high temperature and density led to an explosive incident, like a strengthened supernovae. From this supernovae, the universe entered the state it is in today, including all of our laws of physics, and began to expand. 13.8 billion years later, and the universe continues this expansion. The Big Crunch theory states that this expansion will actually one day come to an end. Once it expands and reaches a certain average density, the process will halt and effectively cause the universe to contract back in on itself. What actually happens when the universe folds back in on itself isn't actually detailed by astronomers. Some believe everything would simply collapse back into a dimensionless singularity, however this would require the existence of quantum gravity, which is currently just theoretical physics. If it were to play out that way, the Big Crunch would ultimately signal the existence of an oscillating universe model. This means that there have been, and always will be, infinite sequences of finite universes being created, expanding, collapsing, and creating all over again. The two major issues with the Big Crunch scenario is in order for it to be a possibility, the second law of thermodynamics would need to be broken, as the cycles of the universe's birth and death would cause a buildup of entropy that leads to heat death or basically, another big chill. If the universe sequencing was infinite, 
the big chill theoretically should have already happened. The other paradox is our understanding that the universe is not a closed entity or finite in nature, meaning expansion should occur until thermodynamic equilibrium ends its existence once and for all. The fourth way our universe could find itself at the end of its current iteration isn't exactly a doomsday scenario. However, it does spell chaos and uncertainty across a chunk of the cosmos that is technically at risk at any given moment. This situation is called the Big Slurp Theory. There are astronomers who theorise that our current universe is actually a false vacuum, a vacuum that isn't in its lowest energy state. While true vacuums are only possible when the rest of its environment is in such a state, false vacuums still have the potential to break through any wavelength barriers that may exist, a process known as quantum tunnelling. If the universe is indeed a false vacuum, tunnelling into its low energy state would be considered false vacuum decay. It should be noted, our current universe isn't actively decaying like this scenario. However, it is in a metastable state meaning it could begin decaying without a moment's notice. What would happen if the big slurp was initiated is another mystery in and of itself. If the decay were happening at an extreme degree, the entire nature of physical constants could be drastically altered, such as the speed of light, gravity, and electricity. With the laws of physics changing unrecognisably, the entire fabric of space-time would be unlike anything we've ever seen. Properties of matter, such as the relationship of solids, liquids, and gases, would interact differently as a whole. Energy would be created, stored, and released in unimaginable ways too. If the constants were altered to a certain degree, what we consider physical in the current iteration of the universe would be destroyed, and what would remain wouldn't be comprehended. The worst part of the big slurp is we would have no idea it happened, everything would slurp instantaneously, and we would almost certainly cease to exist. While this may sound just as horrifying, if not more so, than the previous three scenarios, it should be understood that only a portion of the universe would be affected, a portion dwarfed in size when compared to the unaffected portions. The reason is because galaxies located at distances greater than 13.7 billion light years away from each other are moving away from each other, at speeds greater than the speed of light. False vacuum decay cannot expand itself faster than the speed of light. Even if the speed of light constantly changes within the realms of the vacuum decay sector. So whenever the big slurp would happen, far sides of the universe in all directions would be saved. Regardless of how it happens, there will be an end to the universe, just like there was a beginning. Most data we have today suggests its demise is billions upon billions of years away, long past the end of our own planet and the galaxy in which we currently reside, meaning we probably don't need to worry about it. And even if everything in our great cosmos were to die earlier than anticipated, it would happen so quickly you wouldn't know what happened. It may not be comforting, but it is nice to know even the largest entity in all of our existences will reach its end just like us and everything else. Thank you for joining us this week on Access Astronomy. Make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join us here next week where we will delve into more of the unknown of our vast universe.